Hey there, today I'm going to be showing you seven new chicken dinner recipes that your entire family will love. These recipes are also so simple to throw together, so let's go start cooking. To kick us off today, we are making this ultra easy enchilada casserole. I think you might like this one. So to begin, you'll want about four cups of shredded chicken. You could use a rotisserie chicken or boil your chicken on the stove and then shred it from there. But I just chose to boil mine up in the instant pot. So I added about three frozen chicken breasts with a cup of water, set my valve to sealing, and I cooked this on high pressure for about 25 minutes with a quick release. Here it is after those 20 25 minutes I shredded it up in a bowl so now I have my shredded chicken to the chicken you are going to want to add about two tablespoons of any type of taco seasoning you like and then go ahead and stir this all together Now it's time to assemble our enchiladas. I have 28 ounces of green chili enchilada sauce. Of course, you could use more or less enchilada sauce depending on your preference. I poured a little bit of that enchilada sauce to the bottom of my two quart casserole dish, put a layer of corn tortillas on top of that, and now I'm spreading sour cream all over the top of those corn tortillas. Next, you'll add a little bit of the shredded chicken and then sprinkle the top with Monterey Jack cheese or you could use pepper jack cheese, whatever your preference is. I did a total of three layers. This will bake covered with foil in a preheated oven to 375 degrees for about 35 minutes and then uncover it and bake it for an additional 15 minutes. Here is the finished product. I topped mine with plenty of sour cream, cherry tomatoes, lime, cilantro, and iceberg lettuce, but just top yours with your favorite toppings. This meal comes together in no time at all and it's delicious. This pesto tortellini is one of those things where my sister always asks me to make it when she's over. So to get this one started, I poured a tablespoon of olive oil in this pan, then added my cubed pound of chicken breast with a little bit of salt and then a fourth a cup of these sun-dried tomatoes. You're gonna cook this chicken completely through at this point. Now that my chicken is all cooked up, I'm just going to remove it to a separate plate, set the plate aside, cover it with some aluminum foil to keep it warm. So now we're going to cook our asparagus. In my same pan, I added an additional tablespoon of some olive oil with my pound of trimmed asparagus, an additional fourth a cup of sun-dried tomatoes, and a fourth a cup of water. You're gonna cook this for about five to 10 minutes until the asparagus is nice and tender. Well, I do have our asparagus cooking up. I'm gonna take this time and boil my nine ounces of cheese tortellini. Now that I have my asparagus to the tenderness that I like it to be, I added back in my chicken that I cooked up previously with a third a cup of some basil pesto. You could add more or less pesto in, just depending on your preference. Also, if you wanna add more chicken in because you have a larger amount of people you're feeding, go ahead and cook up more chicken. This recipe is very, very easy to kind of make your own. I added in eight ounces of cherry tomatoes that I sliced in half with my cooked up tortellini. I gave it a good stir, then it's ready to serve. Here is my bowl of food. I just sprinkled some Parmesan cheese on top. This has amazing flavor, and if you're a pesto fan, I think you'd love it. Now we're getting started on these ranch chicken avocado burritos. So to begin, in my large Ziploc bag right here, I'm adding two large chicken breasts that I sliced in half horizontally so it appears as four chicken breasts. I do like to cut my chicken like that just so it cooks up a lot quicker. Anyways, to the bag, I'm adding a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning, three tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon of lime juice, and a half a cup of fresh cilantro. I gave this a really good shake and then I let this marinate in my fridge for about one to two hours. If you don't have time to let this marinate, you definitely could skip that step.
Now it's time to begin to cook up our chicken. So I'm using my grill pan. If you don't have a grill pan, I totally understand. You could use a regular pan on the stove or you could cook your chicken up on the barbecue grill outside. So after I placed the chicken down on my pan, I cooked it on each side until my chicken reached 165 degrees internally. And then I removed it to a separate plate and cut it up. So now it's time to assemble our burritos. I have a large burrito sized tortilla right here. I added a little bit of Monterey Jack cheese to the bottom and then some of the chicken that we cut up along with sliced avocado, fresh cilantro, and then a little bit of ranch. On the very top, I topped it with more cheese and then I rolled it up to the best of my ability. We do want the cheese to be nice and melty in these burritos. So back over to the pan that we cooked the chicken in. I oiled it a little bit and then I let the pan get hot and I cooked these burritos for a couple of minutes on each side and then they were ready to serve. These burritos are so, so good. My mom actually made burritos just like this when I was growing up and I would devour them. They are amazing. My entire family enjoys them. Now we're making this mushroom chicken spinach packed lasagna. To begin, I'm going to be dicing up one white onion and thinly slicing eight ounces of mushrooms. To my saucepan with about two tablespoons of some hot olive oil in it, I added my mushrooms and onions. Next, you're gonna add about a tablespoon of some minced garlic. For the seasonings, I'm adding a teaspoon of dried basil and oregano, and just about a pinch of some crushed red pepper flakes. I didn't add a ton of crushed red pepper, but if you want it to have a little bit more of a kick, some more spice, go ahead and add some more red pepper in. I also added a pinch of some salt. You're going to let this cook together for about five to eight minutes. Stir it pretty frequently. Now that the liquid from the mushrooms has evaporated and my veggies are softened, you're gonna add two cups of some baby spinach in and two cups of shredded chicken. I just boiled my chicken up in the Instant Pot and then shredded it from there. You're gonna stir this all around and let the spinach wilt down. After I added the veggie and chicken mixture into a separate bowl, set that bowl to the side, we're gonna begin to work on the sauce now. So into the same saucepan I was using, I just added two and a half cups of some chicken broth with one and a half cups of some whole milk. Next, you're gonna add a fourth a teaspoon of some nutmeg and just a pinch of salt. You're gonna stir this around and bring it up to a simmer. Now that our sauce is up to a slow simmer, I'm going to slowly add in a fourth a cup of some all-purpose flour. This is really gonna thicken this sauce up. You do wanna make sure you add the flour in slowly just to make sure that you don't have any clumps in the end. I continued to whisk the sauce for about five to 10 minutes until it started to thicken up. So now that it is starting to get thicker, I added my fourth cup of Parmesan cheese in. I'm going to let the cheese melt down and then your sauce is finished. Assembling this lasagna is very simple. I have a two quart baking dish right here. I poured some sauce down on the bottom so the noodles don't stick, about a cup of sauce I'd say. And then I added some oven ready lasagna noodles or you could use just normal lasagna noodles, whatever your preference is some of the chicken and veggie mixture. And then on each layer, I added about three fourths cup of some mozzarella cheese. There's a total of three layers. Cover with some aluminum foil and bake in the oven on 375 degrees for 25 minutes and then uncover it and bake it for an additional 15 minutes. Here's the finished product. My husband said this was one of his favorite lasagnas of all time. This just had some really great flavor. I served this with some steamed peas. I had all the right intentions on making a salad to go on the side on that night, but I was too tired when it came down to it. 
Now we're making these creamy chicken tacos that are only three ingredients, so you need to try this one. To the bottom of my slow cooker, I added two large chicken breasts. Next, right on top of those chicken breasts, you'll be adding about six ounces of cubed cream cheese. And then for the last ingredient, you'll be adding about a cup to a cup and a half of any type of salsa you like on top. This will cook on low for about six hours or until your chicken is completely cooked. Now that our chicken has reached the internal temperature of 165 degrees, I'm shredding the chicken up. I'm just making it easy on myself and shredding it with my electric hand mixer, or you could shred your chicken with two forks or a meat masher. Now that our sh chicken is completely shredded, you see how creamy and beautiful it is. I chose to serve mine in flour tortillas with a little bit of cheese, cilantro, lettuce, and cherry tomatoes, but you could serve yours on chips, kind of like as nachos or in a salad. Anything would be delicious with this creamy taco chicken. I can't hardly remember the last time I made orange chicken, so now that's what we're making. To this medium-sized bowl, I added a cup and a half of all-purpose flour with a half a cup of cornstarch and a dash of salt and pepper. I whisked these dry ingredients all together, and now you are going to be adding in one egg along with one and one-fourth cup of water and a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Whisk everything to combine. Now that the batter looks like this, it's time to stir in our chicken. I'm using about a pound and a half of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I do suggest you using chicken thighs as opposed to like chicken breast for this recipe, just because the chicken thighs will be a lot more juicy in the end. But if you wanted to, you could use chicken breast. But anyways, I'm covering this with cling wrap and I'm going to set it in my fridge to chill for about 30 minutes. Here we are about 30 minutes later. It's time to start on the white sticky rice now. I wanna show you how I do it in my Instant Pot. After I sprayed the bottom of my Instant Pot with nonstick spray, I added a cup of rinsed jasmine rice with a cup of water, put the lid on top, set it to ceiling, and then I pressed the rice button. That's all I do. Over here to my large pot, I have about three and a half cups of hot vegetable oil. You do wanna make sure your oil is hot before you start adding the chicken in. So here is the chicken that I pulled out of the fridge. I'm just shaking off any excess batter and then adding it in. I did do this in a about three different batches so my chicken wasn't overcrowding. I let it fry in my pot for a few minutes on each side or until my chicken was completely cooked through. Now that all of my chicken is cooked, I'm going to start on the sauce now. In this little bowl, I have a tablespoon of water. To the water, I added three teaspoons of cornstarch. Mix this together so the cornstarch is no longer lumpy. Over to my pan on the stove, I'm going to be adding the juice from about two oranges in, so about a fourth a cup of orange juice. Next, to add in a half a cup of brown sugar with a tablespoon of minced garlic, four tablespoons of low sodium soy sauce, and a third a cup of white vinegar. Whisk this together and bring it up to a simmer. Once it does start to simmer, go ahead and add in the cornstarch slurry that we just made up. Continue to whisk this until the corn starch slurry thickens. Once it does thicken, add in the cooked chicken. Stir the chicken around to get coated in the sauce. You don't want to cook the chicken in the sauce very long or else your chicken might not be as crispy. I served my orange chicken over a bed of that Instant Pot white rice. I sprinkled plenty of sesame seeds and green onions over the top. I really need to be making orange chicken more often. It is so good and it's really not very hard to make at all. Now we're making this Southwest chicken skillet. On my cutting board right here, I'm just going to cut up my one red bell pepper into smaller pieces along with my one onion. After that, I am going to set them to the side and over to my stove. I have it on medium heat and I just added about two tablespoons of olive oil. Once my oil is hot, I'm going to add the bell pepper and the onion and I'm going to cook them until they're soft. It should take about three to five minutes, I'd say. 
Now that my veggies are soft, I'm going to add in my tablespoon of minced garlic, stir it around until it is fragrant, and then you'll add in your one can of drained and rinsed black beans along with one can of drained corn, two cups of cooked shredded chicken, and then for the seasonings, this is going to make it taste so amazing, two teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of cumin, teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, and then a fourth a teaspoon of black black pepper, stir everything to combine. After about five minutes of cooking together, everything has heated through. Now I'm going to add in the juice from one lime, give it one last good stir, and then it is ready to serve. You could serve this however you want to, but I love serving mine with a little bit of cheese on top, sour cream, avocado, and cilantro. This has a nice mild flavor. It's not spicy at all, but it really does have delicious flavor, and I think you'd love it. I hope you found a recipe for for yourself today and I would really love to have you here so go ahead and subscribe down below the video and I'll see you in the next one bye for now